Hi friends, join me for a peaceful afternoon of homemaking while I share some biblical encouragements for wives and mamas. Hello, I'm Stacy, a wife and homemaker of 17 years and a homeschooling mom to eight children. I help equip Christian women to keep their homes with excellence while keeping their hearts abiding in Christ. Welcome to Abiding Home. My husband is working outside with the children on farm chores, and while my baby naps, I will be working on some homemaking tasks inside the house and having a little bit of quiet time to think, pray, and plan. Charles Spurgeon said, You are as much serving God in looking after your own children and training them up in God's fear and minding the house and making your household a church for God as you would be if you had been called to lead an army to the battle for the Lord of hosts. Our modern culture says, that the homemaker is lazy and wasting her time and talents. But God's word tells a different story. Proverbs 14.1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Titus 2 tells the older women to encourage the younger women to be keepers at home. The Bible shows us God's plan and design for married women in their childbearing years. His plan is for them to be homekeepers. This doesn't mean that women can never bring in an income. In fact, the Proverbs 31 woman was industrious and blessed her household financially, but the home is the young woman's primary place of ministry. A godly homemaker is seeking to love and obey her husband and to support him in the calling God has placed on his life. She is seeking to obey in the command to be fruitful and multiply and she sees children as a blessing from the Lord. She is seeking to love and bring up her children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. She is also seeking to show hospitality to those who visit her home. She uses her time and energy to cultivate a peaceful and orderly home. This does not mean that she is doing it all perfectly. In fact, a godly homemaker is a humble woman who recognizes that she is still growing and being sanctified. She knows there is always room to grow. She has a humble heart that springs forth speech which is kind, loving, and charitable. She is not elevating herself above other homemakers and trying to exalt her way of doing things. She is simply seeking to be faithful to what the Lord has specifically ordained for her household. I said this in the last video and it bears repeating when it comes to homemaking. No one does it perfectly, but we can do it faithfully. What is an area of homemaking that the Lord is prompting you to seek to be more faithful in? Maybe take some time to write it down and pray about it after this video. Contrary to the feministic lie that a homemaker is a lazy leech, homemaking is far from a cushy and easy job. It takes time, energy, planning, and self-sacrifice. Becoming a good and efficient homemaker is not something that comes naturally. It's something we pursue, learn, and grow in. Some women were trained more than others in the ways of homemaking, but even those who have been well-trained often find that it's an altogether different thing to do it in your own house with your own children often while being pregnant or tired or sick. Homemaking is not for the faint of heart, and being a Christian homemaker will require you to rely on the Lord's strength. Although the demands of marriage, motherhood, and homemaking can feel endless, we must find time to spend alone with God. Even Jesus, when he was on this earth, would withdraw to the wilderness or send the multitudes away so that he could seek strength from his heavenly Father. If Jesus needed to do this, how much more do we, who are still fighting our sinful flesh, need to? This is where the name Abiding Home came from. In John 15, 
5 through 6, Jesus says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. We want all of our homemaking to spring forth from a heart that is abiding in Jesus. It truly means very little if we are doing it for ourselves or for the praises of others. Instead, we should do it out of love for Christ and to glorify Him. It's time to get some dinner started. This evening we have Wednesday night church, so a quick one-pot meal is perfect. The meal I'm making this evening is very simple and can be done quickly. First, brown your meat. I used ground lamb, but you could use ground beef as well. Then add some meat broth or bone broth. I had some boxes of broth in my pantry that needed to be used up, but it's more economical and healthy to make your own. I will share in a future video how to make bone broth. After the broth, pour in a box of pasta and two cans of tomatoes. They don't have to be home canned like mine. You can just grab some canned tomatoes from the store. Then season with salt, Italian seasoning, and garlic powder. These seasonings are very forgiving and don't need to be measured. You can taste test since the meat is already cooked if you aren't quite sure. I top this soup with shredded cheese as I serve it, and it adds even more richness, but the soup is good without it as well. Our family just loves cheese on almost everything. I'll be honest, cooking was a major challenge for me as a young homemaker. When I first got married, I didn't even know how to crack an egg. I called my mom for the first few months of my married life asking her for recipes and meal ideas. Thankfully, she was willing to help. I wish that I had paid attention and pursued learning how to be a good homemaker in my younger years instead of being so focused on temporary pleasures. But God is good to give us wisdom and growth when we ask Him. I'm proof that the Lord can restore the years the locusts have eaten because through much practice and many kitchen blenders, I have now learned to cook for my family. I no longer need guidance to whip up a meal, and I've learned what seasonings and food combinations my husband and children enjoy. On this channel, I want to help equip women who may find themselves in a similar situation to me when I was just learning how to cook. So I will make it a point to share basic and easy meals I believe it's part of the calling for older women to teach the younger women, even in the practical how-tos of homemaking. I feel like the biblical and practical are both very important. If you're just getting started with cooking, or if you are changing to a new diet that will require you to learn a whole new way of cooking than what you're used to, then I suggest finding four to five meals that you repeat each week so that you can cook them almost on autopilot. You can begin to tweak those recipes to your husband and children's taste. Then you can add a new recipe or two each week to keep learning. It keeps things from getting overwhelming and builds confidence in the kitchen. What a joy it is to have the ability to fill up plates and bowls for the people we love the most. Whether you are a gourmet chef or just learning, it's a joy to feed our families with the fruits of our labors, and it's a way that we serve the Lord in our callings as homemakers.
Some people have recently made the accusation that homemaking is a trend. There's even a new term for a homemaker being called a trad wife that you may have heard if you spend much time on social media. It seems to be short for traditional wife. But the truth is, homemaking for the Christian is not a trend or a pendulum swing to fight in the culture wars. Titus 2, 4 through 5 says that the older women teach and admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Homemaking is a biblical command that is directly linked to the word of God not being blasphemed. This is why it's important. This is why it matters. So let's apply ourselves to diligence and rely on Jesus to be our strength. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you keep your home for his glory. I pray this video was a blessing to you today. Please subscribe and check out my other videos for more homemaking and biblical womanhood inspiration and encouragement. I'll see you all next time.